I'm standing here next to Baines Valley. The bridge that goes across the valley is gone now. I took it out in preparation for this work. But you can see that there's some sloppiness here in the paintwork. There's some pencil lines used for construction that are on the sky. Got to get rid of those. There's some paint slops here and here. Um, back here, there's more pencil marks on the sky. There's some places where I got spackle on the sky when I was putting the hills in. Now, some people think that you should do the backdrop first and then do the foreground scenery afterwards. And I tried doing that, but the last time I tried doing that, I wound up with splatters. And I masked way up high, but I didn't mask up high enough, and I got some splatters on the sky. And they're kind of hard to get rid of once you got the clouds up there and then you splatter on it. It's really hard to match. So I was thinking I was going to try painting the background after I did the messy work in the foreground this time. Let's see how this is going to work. So I've been saving up newspapers for a while now. I'm just start sitting them up here, overlapping them. I'll be using two brushes, a fair-sized brush and a much smaller one for the fine work. I'm going to dip these brushes in some water first because they clean up much better when they've got water in the bristles already. Got a little bowl of water here. Then uh, into our painter's palette can. And uh, I'm going to use this knife here as a extra guide to try to keep paint off the, the layout. Well, there's more to be done over here by Baines Valley. I've gotten the sky down to the ground quite a ways so far, but there's more to be done. I'm taking a little bit of a risk. I don't have any newspaper down. I'm just using this putty knife to try to do local masking on the layout. If I'm careful, it should work okay. Now the distant hills painting is going to go on over the lower part of the sky. So I don't need to get the sky perfect here. I've got to be careful. A lot of paint on this side of the putty knife. But there's going to be a little paint here, so I'm going to go wipe that off before I do this again. Otherwise, I'm going to get some blue on the dirt. And when I'm doing masking, I don't use regular masking tape. I use this blue painter's tape. It doesn't stick as much. But even that's not going to work too well. It's too sticky. So I take a piece of this stuff and I, I attach it to my shirt. Kind of funny, huh? But then I peel it off. And that makes it even less sticky than it was before. But even with that less sticky blue, I found that I can still manage to peel some of my backdrop painting right off the wall if I'm not careful. So this is the reason why I decided to try painting the backdrop last and doing the foreground first. That way I don't need to mask off the backdrop and I don't have the problem with peeling paint off the wall. I'm going to start moving the clouds down lower here. I want the clouds to get lower and lower and lower as we head towards the corner up here. Part of that is I got this clock up here and I don't want to paint it. But part of it's also that having the same level of clouds everywhere doesn't look very natural. I, I like to break the scenery up. And so uniformity is really the enemy of that. So to make that happen, I'm going to be concentrating on putting clouds down low and not very much up high. Later on we're going to come in with a row of distant hills 
And those hills are probably only going to be about this high here. So I want the effect of the clouds poking up over these hills. Every once in a while, we'll have one that's sticking up a little bit higher. Well, I finished the clouds the first pass. Let's take a look at what there is here. Now we're panning across into Mill Bend. Clouds in Mill Bend reach way up high. And the clouds end as we get to South Jackson Yard. The clouds are looking pretty good now. But I'm going to mix up a little bit of gray using this bottle of black and the white. And we're going to apply that underneath the tops of the clouds, sort of the underside of the clouds, where it's a little darker. It'll give them a bit of a 3D effect. Now, it's not going to take much of this black. In fact, we're just going to put, a, I'm going to put three drops in. Let's see what that mixes up to. Wow, that's way too dark. Well, maybe it's not that bad, but I'll, I'll need to be very careful when I apply it. Just put on a little bit, otherwise uh, we could make it look like it's a dark and stormy day. Well, I got the paint all mixed up and ready to go for the bottoms of the clouds. Let's see how it looks. Well, what do you think? Is that looking a little better? Well, I finished putting the gray underlining of the clouds on. The gray definitely makes the clouds look a bit more three-dimensional because they show the shadow that the sun casts underneath the clouds. If you look at clouds on a cloudy day, you notice that the clouds are not all the same color. Well, uh, we're going to get started painting the backdrop now. Now, to make sure that I can fade in a new segment of scenery after this one, because I'm not painting scenery over here yet today. So, we'll bring this hill up gradually, and then I'll be able to blend it in later on. Now, one of the questions I've got here is, where's the horizon level? Now, for me standing here, the horizon level should be about eye level, which is up here. But that's just too darn tall. And I'm thinking, I want it to look right from a layout point of view, because I do a lot of layout photography from low angles. So, is this really the right height for a hill? And I'm thinking, no, this is too low. I think the hill should be up here somewhere. I also don't want the top of the hill to be perfectly level. Should have some lumps in it and some hollows in it. So we can see how the perspective of this hill is going to look. I've put a building in there. Let's take a look at see how that's going to pan out from a low angle. Now imagine those hills are topped with a little bit of uh, tree ridge and that there's some uh, brownish haze on them. I think that might look okay. Let's uh, keep going and see how this works out. Now I've got this smaller brush here. I'm going to use that to try to finish off this edge a little better. I want the edge to be a little more well-defined. But the other thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to add just a touch of uh, what's going to hopefully look a bit like trees growing on this edge that's way off in the distance. That takes a 
makes a very fine touch. These trees are so far away, you're not going to see hardly any detail at all to them. Now, you really can't paint these trees deliberately. Sit down and say, oh yes, that's going to be a tree shape, and that's going to be a tree shape. So I'm just sort of dabbing paint on here. Now, since this is the Oregon Cascades, there are going to be places where there are trees on the ridge line, but then there's going to be places where it's been clear cut and there are no trees at all for a ways. There, how does that look?